and we want to thank you for coming. We are in for another great evening on Prospering Earth. Amen. Of course, we prayed already, but we're going to pray again because this is a new meeting. This is something. Um, well, we thank you for coming again. We we're sorry that you have been waiting and trying to come in. And, and we know there are others <coughs> who have been trying. But nevertheless, God is awesome and we ought to give him thanks. He knows uh, He knows to get around these things and uh, we are grateful. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't have missed this for anything. So <laughs> we, we know the Lord uh, has his hands on it. And so without further ado, I'm going <coughs> to put a word of prayer. And then we'll introduce our special guest for this day's program. Oh, let us pray. Bring our mind and our 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 being into that frame of reverence as we ask the Lord to oversee mm -hmm. in our program this evening. Oh, Father, we are so grateful for this precious time you have given us. Thank you for the Sabbath day and worshiping and fellowshipping and sharing. And we have come to this time when <coughs> we are reminded and we try to remind everyone of that precious gift of health that yes. you have given us. And so at this time we pray for a special guest or all our special guests and our special guest speaker yeah. and our family. We pray that whatever you lay on our heart to share with us today, that it will, as we listen, it will take root. And that, and of course, as we are dealing with women's health, we pray that God bless us to listen and to, to understand and to put it in practice. Again, bless this meeting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> well, welcome <coughs> one and all. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Sister Dikaris and your dear husband. We know that you stand together and without him. Are you hearing me well? Yes. Okay, let me make sure all my <coughs> instruments are up right here because I was yes, this mm -hmm. one up. Okay. Yeah, so we want to thank you for taking your time from your busy um, schedule and you, uh, of course, you've planned and put things together and so we, now we are in for a great package. And so we want to thank you for joining us in Prospering Health today. Uh, <clears throat> whatever you share, we know it will ricochet all the way through the ears of mankind, All uh, right. those mm -hmm. who will listen. Mm -hmm. And we know if it is only one, <laughs> that is still a blessing. So, <clears throat> folks, Sister Dick Harris, uh, she's another stalwart in the health field. And we have been privileged to mm. listen and to learn from her. She's a versatile lady. She wears more than one crown. <laughs> she wears a crown of family life, a presenter, a trainer, and she wears the crown of um, our medical uh, field 
and we know that those are some work that some of those are some real work that our nurses do real work uh, <clears throat> I've been privileged to I'm not a nurse uh, but I've been privileged to see mm -hmm. and to uh, uh, actually experience uh, them in action all through the night sometimes and I, I remember saying to myself these people are must be well paid but mm -hmm. um, <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> but they would uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure they will say otherwise mm -hmm. regarding that but <clears throat> we know that Payment is not just silver and gold, because you remember Peter says, silver and gold I have not, but such as I have, and so they have more than what silver and gold can suffice. And so, thank you again, we, we, are, we are awaiting what the Lord has laid upon your heart, and I'll just see if my Queen Air has anything else to say in regarding our journey together oh, yes. as sisters and brothers. Of course, we have Before no... you go, Sister Judith, yes. uh, I know Sister Wilson had invited someone. If we could reach out, maybe Sister, Sister Mark could do the back channels for us. Okay. And somebody oh. else had texted on the, on the cross for Whatever your, your WhatsApp Western is, health. that they were not able to get in if we could like, follow through with that. Okay. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> yes, Sister G, we have known each other for years. <laughs> and um, for, for those who aren't acquainted, um, Sister G is a woman of God very spirited, has a lively spirit, and is willing to work hard to, you know, alleviate the suffering and misery of those whom she come in contact with. So I know that she has something special, always very interesting, and um, a devoted wife, and um, I am sure we are going to be blessed. We couldn't miss this this afternoon. <laughs> so it's all yours, Sister G. Thank you, my, my dear. Girl, yeah. Let me go ahead and see if I can share my screen. Mm -hmm. I'll share my screen. All right. You have to come on. So you have to enable me? Yes, yes I will. I hope I can do that because um, this is a strange line line for me. So, so Sister Jasset is saying she can't get on. Sister Mark, do you have these numbers? Uh, Waiting room too. Okay. I send it to Sister Jasset. I send okay. it to Moody line, Moody platform. Okay. 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 Um, I hope I can admit that. They're asking mm -hmm. what is the 10-digit number. <laughs> it's, it's on the line and we shared it for this meeting. As I said, it, this is a strange line for me. Um, yeah, I was surprised strange. to see that it, you know, it got... Well, <clears throat> all right, so you need to... Um, I need to share. Need you need to share. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, going to... Oh, that just uh, where is that? Is that right here? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see if I can do that. This technology has all of us learning at the same time. <laughs> yes, 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 it does. Yes, all right. New way of living. <laughs> I think uh, <clears throat> you have access. I do? Okay, yeah. let me try. Uh, this is 
telling me you've disabled my access. Post has disabled person on participant screen sharing. Mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, I take your time and see how, how yeah, it goes. I, I, uh, yeah, when yeah. we're not in our comfort zone, if anything could go <laughs> up. Mm. Oh, you bet, you bet, you bet. Brother and Albert, you, you, you give your co-host already that you can share the screen? Yes. I did. He's working okay. on that. You're the host. Oh, yeah. I see you are the host right now. You probably have to give me. Let me go ahead and share. Brother and Albert, click on you and you see it and it's a co-host, so you give me a co-host. Yeah, I, I gave that, but I did that because I always done that, but mm -hmm. it's just giving me a strange thing. It says, no, all right, let me look and see if you are really cool, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, you don't give a cool. Of course, of course. You give a cool, you shouldn't give a cool. You have to give a cool, oh, yeah. not the holes. How it goes. That's what I. Uh, uh, that's what All right, sister, the cares. Give him back for us. Reclaim hoes. Mm. Hold on. No, you're going to put me in trouble. No, just <clears throat> no, touch the name and say for us. I, re I reclaim it, so. Okay, let me see. Okay. All right, so touch our name now. Oh, hold on. I... So he's the host, yes. All right, touch our name and when you come up, you turn her in a four hoes. <laughs> mm. I did that, but uh, let me see. Actually, uh, let me see if she gets it. Me. Well, you might have to turn her in a house if Satan is a lion. Okay. Okay, try now, the sister. The, the. Okay. Alright, let me see. Okay, you co host now. Okay. Alright, let me. Because okay. when you want to, you want to be a host that you can let these people, brother, and Alright. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. I'm in. All yeah, right. you are to be a technical person. <laughs> 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 you got to learn in real time. Yeah. Okay. From all, from We're making all. our homes heaven and earth through the expression. So, good afternoon, brethren, and, and all the guests, hosts, and um, it's truly really a privilege to be here today. Uh, earlier today, we had a little moody fest. <laughs> 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 we had lunch together. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was a blessing. And then we had to disperse because we were coming on here. But it's truly really a privilege for us to be in God's presence and mm. to learn together. Mm. And we are living in a time when we have to accustom ourselves to associating with each other, not being abrasive, mm. but learning to love each other because soon the kingdom will come. All right, so the topic mm. of this um, presentation is making our homes heaven and earth and through the expression of love language. It has more to it, and I was not, you know, I didn't fine tune it as well as I would have liked, but we're going to glean as much as we can from it today. I know I was supposed to be talking on women's health, and it's gonna come out mm -hmm. in the, um, the presentation because women's health is not only physical, a lot of times our health breaks down because our minds are not at ease. And we are going to learn that. Now, if you have questions, I would like somebody to let me know because although I have two phone, two um, devices here, uh, I don't like to be distracted by uh, whatever else is going on. Are you able to see me? I have two screens. I'm seeing you well. Yes. Seeing me and you're seeing my screen. Uh huh. Uh huh. They're not together. Because. Uh, uh, yes, I see what you shared, and we okay, are seeing good. you. Good, good, good. Amen. All right. So let us 
move along. Now, I was going to say, if you have questions, raise your hand. If you want to make a contribution, you can raise your hand. And uh, Sister McCallum, you could assume the position of letting you know who, who is in line. All right. So we have a photo here. How do two young people, I mean, <laughs> they're Christians, but not according to our standard. But how do they look? You can talk to me. Beautiful and handsome. handsome. Mm -hmm. Beautiful and what? Handsome? Ha handsome, yes. Yeah. What else? They, will, kind of they look relaxed and happy. And in love. And in love, yeah. yeah. They look like they're in love. They look happy. You know, and we knew those times, those of us who were married. <laughs> and then for some of us, we saw the other side of this, right? Yeah. yeah. But this is what love looks like when it's young and fresh and engaging. And if we are, are, are smart enough and if we are converted enough, the love can continue like this even as we grow older. What is love language? Love, we know, is a verb. I love, you love, he, she, it loves, we love, you love, they love. It's a verb. It's conjugated. And so, it is a simple expression of love, care, concern, and consideration for your spouse. That's what love language is. Love is a verb. Love cannot remain long without expression. If we love people, we're going to show it to them. It's going to show in our eyes. It's going to show in our demeanor. Love is just going to exude if we, um, we feel love for someone. And a lot of times people are in love and they want to keep it a secret, you know. And people could just look at you. You're in an assembly or in a, in a, in a company and people can pick up from the way you you show yourselves to each other, even when you try not to to show expression outwardly for people to see. They can pick it up. All right. Now, in the year 1995, a book was written by Gary Chapman, and the title was How to Express Heartfelt Commitment to Your Mate. And the book outlined five expressions and experiences of love or the love languages and I want us to pay attention to them. Words of affection or affirmation, that's one. Quality time, that's another one. Receiving gifts, that's another one. Acts of service or devotion. <laughs> And then touch. So those are the languages of love. If you love somebody, you want to spend time with them. If you love someone, you might not necessarily want to receive gifts, but you might want to be giving that person things. And, and you don't have to be rich to give gifts, you know. You don't have to wait for someone's birthday or special event to give gifts. If you really love that person, and you were able to put your hand on something that you know that person likes, you can get it for them. Because, for example, the birthday might come around and you might be broke. And the world sees things like that, the whole birthday and Christmas and this and that. But generally, if you love someone, you want to make them happy, you can make gifts to them. If you love someone, you want to be close to them, you want to touch them, you want to say words of affirmation. So all of these are classified in the um, outline of, of, of the language of love. Continuing, let's break this down now. Words of affirmation. You can speak or you can write. Now, generally, communication, we understand, is one of the better means, if not the best, in forging a good relationship. If you're happy, you need to express yourself. If you're sad, express yourself. If you're upset, 
talk about it in a candid way in your relationship and that goes a far way now communication verbal communication could be in writing or it could be said okay that's how you communicate verbally you speak or you write so you can make little cards if you're so creative or leave little love notes for your significant other and um, that goes a far way and what you want to avoid you want to avoid emotionally harsh words mm -hmm. or undue criticism some people find the time to criticize everything that's not right but when it comes to giving affirmation and approbation and commendation and expressing courtesies it's difficult for them and so as Christians we have to reset our minds mm -hmm. look at the good things and the more we seek to look at the good things we will help people to to have positive behavior and even the things that we dislike about them or what they do eventually those things can change if we keep re-emphasizing and um, and playing up as it were the good things in that person's life or attitude quality time we live in a very busy age right now as we are here my husband is in the other room doing a presentation is there <laughs> busy <laughs> all week we go he's teaching i'm teaching his work you know and, and and it's the same for all of us it's a busy time so how do we get to spend time or show that we can provide quality time for each other we can run little errands you know mm -hmm. when you're coming in could you stop at the store and get me these two items little errands taking trips doing things together taking walks together sitting and talking at home all right so these are ways that we can spend or show that we are investing time in each other and like i said we don't have to be rich people because many times a lot of rich people are not happy but these basic essentials that constitute the language of love if we implement it in our relationships we will have healthy happy relationships in a quiet place with no interruption on divided attention one-to-one -one conversation in many homes especially when they're younger children partners do not get time to to have this quality time and there's a lot of family members come in friends you know let me stop the children here today we're gonna have a night out somewhere or we're gonna spend the afternoon you have to have people in your circle that can help you to bond and bond better because what what happens sometimes because couples do not spend quality time together after a while they become they start to distance themselves from each other not intentionally but because that time that quality time is not spent it seems that everybody gets into their own world and they just start to drift apart so what we want to avoid too much time with friends and groups isolation gaps of time between meetings so some people some husbands and maybe not necessarily christians but some husbands they will go and sit in the room shop spend the whole night with friends some are bikers they go riding with their biking friends some have other activities and they just do not spend enough time with their spouse and so or they go in their rooms by themselves they gotta present a bible study and so they do that all the time any little time especially ministers have to watch that any little time they have they're doing a bible study they're putting together powerpoint they're writing some you know and that's all they're absorbed and their children are ignored their wives are ignored and then you find that after a certain time they have lost so much time 
in getting together with family, that the children grow up faster than they knew it. The wife, she's engaged in her own thing. And then after a while, they drift apart, apart so far mm -hmm. that even divorce becomes an option. And so we have to watch that. Find the time for each other. All right, receiving gifts. Now we, we know that time gifts are not the best gifts to be giving, right? We are taught how to give gifts. And I'm going to read from track 13, page 10, what it says. Not only are Christians to be wise and unselfish, one minute, give, givers at the right time, but also wise and appreciative receivers. Indeed, they should rejoice in the glorious gift of God more than in the perishable gifts of men. Mm. Such Christians are happy in giving love gifts. Let me get my connection next week. the gifts that people give us. Sometimes people give us a gift and we might have something like it, you know, or we don't like the, what the gift is. And the person comes to visit your home, you have it in some place thrown away or the dog is biting on it or whatever. Try to be good and appreciative receivers as much as you are unselfish and wise givers. Because a lot of thought goes into things that people give for the most part. If you're a Christian and you want to do it right, you want to be thoughtful, like the reading says, wise and unselfish givers. Appreciate it. Brother comes and he gives you, let's say, something from his garden. Oh, I have some of that already. No. Wash it. <laughs> you know how you do. You put your salt or whatever, get out all the bugs or whatever. You chip it, you freeze it, and save it for another day. Be appreciative of things that people do for you. And just don't, you know, be so nonchalant about things that people spend time in giving. All right? We know about Mary. When Jesus was at Simon's Supper, and she took her alabaster box, and as she tells her, she had been putting together her little pittances. And, and the alabaster was not a cheap um, perfume, you know. And she saved up her money to buy that, to show Jesus how much she appreciated what he had delivered her from, you know. And, um, and nobody knows how you feel about another person when you're giving your gifts, you know. You might appreciate the person for doing something they might think it's tiny, but you think it's tangible. And uh, and so we need to show appreciation for what people do for us. Giving time, remembering special occasions, giving small tokens. So all of these are in the language of love, receiving, you know, and giving. Give gifts privately and have pleasant facial expressions. You know, the Lord tells us he loves a cheerful giver. Some of us give our tithes. We, you know, we don't even give it. We turn our tithes. And we have to clear ourselves of this and that. And our, even our facial expressions show that we don't want to give it. You know? <laughs> so God wants a cheer. God loves it, a cheerful giver. When we give that tight, return the tight, we must be happy. How many Bible workers this could send to the field? How, you know, we're happy. We're happy to give to the Lord because He's been so good to us. And so we have to uh, show appreciation when we see and 
when we give, we must do it wisely and unselfishly. If I know you don't need a pair of shoes, I ain't waiting Christmas to give you a pair of shoes when <laughs> your toe might be at the door. So the inspiration is telling us, be wise. If you see someone needs something, you give them that gift and, um, and it would be appreciated. In the same vein, we need to avoid materialism. So if you give me something, and that's why the Lord says, you know what? When you keep your feet and all these things, you give it to people who can't give you anything in return. Because what gift giving and gift exchanging does to people is, for example, if I, maybe I purchase, let's say, an iPhone for someone, and then in return, they just maybe give me a roll of toilet paper, you know, just... You, you won't feel happy about that. But maybe that's all the person could have afforded. And so we become very materialistic. And we don't really give. We just exchange. We exchange. We need to come out of that. If we give, it must be from a pure motive, a pure heart, and for the benefit of the receiver. Let me know if there are any hands, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going. Okay. Oh. Oh, well, let me just make an announcement. Well, folks, uh, I know I have to be admitting, but um, our speaker today is Sister De Clarison. She's <clears throat> she's open for a question anytime now. Uh, so, as you can see, we were having technical difficulties. So, thanks to Sister Mac, we jump up something and we happen to have the program. So, just briefly, if you have a question on that, I see one on the chat and so let me just throw it in right now. The person was suggesting that um, uh, <coughs> cheerfulness is not a facial expression, it's the heart. <laughs> so what, you, have, uh, you want to respond to that? What do I have to say? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cheerfulness is both. Oh, okay. Unless your the muscles in your face do not work. Oh. Then you can <laughs> but when you're cheerful, mm, if you, it the heart, the face expresses it it in many instances what the heart is speaking. It's Even though index. some people could dis disguise, you know, they smile with you and stab your back. But generally, if your heart is happy, it shows in your demeanor, in your expression. Uh -huh. But that's a good observation. Uh -huh. All right. Did someone else want to say something? I don't see a hand. Yes. Go ahead. Pardon? I don't see right. a hand. So give <coughs> gifts. Don't gift exchange. Uh, though birthday gifts in honor of a newly born are in accordance with the most generous and noble Im uh, impulses of mankind, the practice of giving gifts to one another on birth anniversary is like the kindred practice of exchanging yield-type gifts, a convention which engenders pride, extravagance, hardship, dissatisfaction, jealousy, sorrow, and a host of related evils. And this comes to us from the same track, page seven. And so some of us, we broke. We want to give gifts for birthday, and sometimes we don't have it. And family and friends must understand that, you know. If you've been giving, you know, along the way, I don't expect when it's my body, you must come up with something, you know. So we have to watch that. It, it engenders a lot of evil and hardships. I know of people that I work with. I feel so much sorrow for them. Mothers. My son told me he wants the iWatch. You know, the watch they wear now for the iPhone. And this one went on a PlayStation. And, and they work so many hours leading up <laughs> to Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's something to see just to get these things that the children are asking for that maybe they don't even necessarily need. 
And so we have to watch that and be careful about it. And don't train ourselves in that way, you know. If my body, what she giving me or what he's giving me, no. If this person has been kind to you all along with little tokens of love and appreciation, don't pressure them to always give you and give you and give you. All right? So we have to be wise givers and um, appreciative receivers. All right. Same track. Being obligatory. Birthday gifts, just as with Christmas gifts, are in the last analysis not gifts at all, but merely formal exchanges which, in most cases, are useless, extravagant, and harmful. The follower of Christ, who wholeheartedly cherishes his counsels, will eschew this baleful custom and habit, whether the occasion be Christmas, Easter, birthdays, or whatever, he will ensure shun bestowing any but love gifts. So when you're giving is out of love, don't pressure yourselves to always find something. And some people get mad. This is all you can give me for my birthday or for Christmas or for whoever, you know, the customs of the world. And it breeds a lot of disrespect and discomfort. And so this person is telling us, Focus more on love gifts. Yeah, you drop in a day, I bring you a little something that you like. Even if it's two bananas, you know, those go far away. Think, it tells that you are thinking about me and um, or, I don't mean me as in myself, but the person and um, and in turn, you um, are... Can I? Yes. Good evening. Can I... Uh... Can I make a comment? Yes, please. Go ahead. Um, in regards to the gift giving, um, sometimes if you don't have something actually tangible to give, but actually a performance, an act, or a mm -hmm. service um, mm -hmm. is also um, a way of you know showing appreciation to your significant other or to any relationship you, you might be in. It could be, for instance, if it's a, a child um, wanting to give a gift to their you know, parent and you may say, okay, um, I don't have money to give you, but I can wash your car, I can cut the That's grass, okay. I, can, mm -hmm. I, can, I can make some groceries, I can clean the house. You know, a spouse mm -hmm. could do that to another spouse. These are all ways of uh, showing appreciation. And you know, and it, and it's it, you know, it's a way of giving something okay. back to right. the individual. So, you know, I always have to look at um, you know something tangible, but sometimes that is appreciated more than something that you buy for the person. Right, and that's so true. But imagine a person who's not educated to appreciate these things. They say, "Mom, I'm gonna come. Today is your birthday. I'm gonna come cut the grass." Mm -hmm. That's all you could do for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some people are, are even oblivious to what, you know, life is all about. If you have a child, he has his children, his wife, he has rent, mortgage, whatever. Don't be expect, don't be such a sponge that you always want some something that you think is tangible. And the person, like you said, could come and if wash your car or or put up some kind of light that you wanted to have done or something. Yeah. Parents and spouses have to be appreciative of these things, you know. So we have to educate ourselves in that way. Yeah. Wise givers, you know. And it and has to be wise receivers too. Yes, go ahead. It also boils the I mean sometimes to the love language as we were talking about earlier. Yes. Sometimes, um, if you know that person's love language, you know, it can be easier. And again, the love language doesn't have to be between spouses. Again, it, it you know, it takes a, a, a spectrum right. of uh, right. uh, uh, parenting with children, uh, friends, co-workers, mm -hmm. entities. Um, it's important to, to to know the love language. But so, so in terms in a marriage, um, if I think each, each spouse should kind of be aware 
mm-hmm. of what my husband's love language is, right. and, what, and and he should be aware what my love language is as a wife. So Amen. we can we can um, you know bring some satisfaction and some enjoyment and appreciation by performing mm-hmm. that love language. And That's I think right. it needs to be explored than mm-hmm. just assuming. <laughs> That's sense. right. And sometimes it calls for a little spontaneity as, as well, you know. Like, what? Uh-huh. She did this? You know, I always try to think of out of the box. And, and like we're all saying, you know, it doesn't have to be something that's <coughs> extravagant. Little, little things. Little courtesies, little appreciations, affirmations. And things like that go far in the house and other relationships. Thanks for that contribution. All right, we continue. What about actions of service? We talked about that. That's one of the love languages. Assisting with home chores, ongoing acts of helpfulness, and exchanging of chores. You know, some people, they draw a straight line in the sand. The husband, he's supposed to do X, Y, and Z, and the wife's supposed to be, be able to do A, B, and C. And there's no crossing. Some people are very, very adamant what constitutes the chores of the man and the chores of the woman. And uh, if we love each other, we are going to cross some lines. You know, you see your wife come home, she's there. She prob- she All she was able to do is maybe take her shoes off and... and She's just tired. She's, Hello, ma'am. Ma'am. Honey, where's the food? <laughs> the food. Remember you told me what to cook some Spanish rice? And you just, you can't even keep your head on your shoulder. How oh, you're so tired. And so, that's the time for the husband to jump in. And, and then, oh, she's tired. I'm going to surprise her when she gets up. And you're sleeping there half, or sleep half awake, and you're just smelling this. Mm, what's cooking there? Mm. You, you're so tired you can't even open your eyes. So things like that we have to do for each other. And it goes a far away um, in expressing our love language. What we want to avoid is forgetting promises, over commitment of tasks, and ignoring. So while we're learning what to do, we need to avoid the things that should not be done. You promise, <laughs> like typically yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, I'm busy with my work. On Fridays, I have so many things to do at work. And so I do my prep before I leave home. So when I come home, I just barely do whatever is left. And, um, and my husband said, you know, you, you could go to the store and pick up X, Y, and Z. So I'm leaving work now. Hello, did you? Oh my goodness, I forgot. So now I gotta go to the store, but I wasn't upset because I know, you know, he's busy. But try not to forget your promises. Don't overcommit and then come short, you know, and, and try not to ignore the other person when things that matter to them. All right. The Adventist Home tells us. Home duties should be performed with conscientiousness. That if they are done in the right spirit, they give an experience that will enable us to work for Christ in the most permanent and thorough manner. Oh, what might not a living Christian do in missionary lines by performing faithfully the daily duties, cheerfully, Lifting the cross, not neglecting any work, however disagreeable to the natural feelings. You know, as I was growing up, my mother had a saying. She was a woman that spoke in a lot of parables. And she told me something, and I keep telling it to younger people that I know. These disagreeable duties, <laughs> she used to say, scornful dog, this eat dirty pudding. <laughs> And when I was little, I couldn't understand. Said, you don't want to wash that out? Scornful dog does eat dirty pudding. Yeah, what does she mean? But as I grew older, if you were scornful of things, 
you're going to leave them there. They get warm, they get whatever. So you got to push your hand down in there and clean whatever. Especially when it came, you have to take long. Go, you take out the, the can or the, the poles, whatever y'all call it. We call it pole. And the can that people used to urinate in overnight, you know, because mm. the, the latrine was at the back there. Mm -hmm. And you bring it and you hardly want to put your hand on You take, wash that thing. It's gone mm -hmm. for down to see dirty pudding. <laughs> <laughs> you better watch it because what is going to happen. The it's urine like is going to stay in it. It's going to stink. Mm -hmm. It's going to not be good for you nor anybody else. So even the, the task is dis disagreeable. You want to do it. And you want to do things like you do it Cheerful. unto God. Mm -hmm. You wash the, the clothes. You fold them up. You, you just do things nicely. So that at the end of the day, God could say, yes, this is a faithful job. And your family would be happy. This girl is so thorough or this boy is so thorough, you know. Or my right husband, thing. he's so thorough and thoughtful. And my wife, when she cooks this particular dish, it's always good. Just the way I like it, you know. We have to do things like that so that we can make each other happy and the family happy. All right. What about physical touch? That's the fifth love language. Hugs, pats, touching, sitting close. Those are things and ways that you can express your love. You know, you know, some people, I tell young people, when you're courting, don't always try Everywhere the boy sit down, you sit down, or the girl, and you sit and sit. Try to involve friends and, you know, make your circle a little wider because, God forbid, and that relationship does not work out, the whole poor knows. Because y'all want to be as far as the east is from the west. <laughs> and so, try to involve all, you know, the groups and, 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 and Slow, slow. It's a slow your roll, you know. Don't be too hard to be up, up, up tight. Take your time. That will come. And so, but expressing love in marriage, hugging and patting and touching and sitting close. And don't be that kind of spouse that you always want your wife up on you. There's times for, there are times for that, you know. Give each other some space sometimes. So when you come back together, you connect with some heat, you know. And all of these things are sciences of how life unfolds, right? What you want to avoid, though, is physical abuse, corporal punishment, threats, and neglects. And a lot of wives these days and husbands are neglected. Like I was saying earlier, some men, <laughs> where I come from, the men would stay in the room shop till the business closed. Mm -hmm. Then they stumble mm -hmm. home to their families. Some of them are very quiet when they drink. And uh, some will be cussing all the way through the streets, you know. You don't want to live your life like that. Don't neglect your family. Don't always be, be belching out threats. Don't all, don't get physical, you know. You don't want to be hitting on your spouse. And many times when you're in a discussion that might tend to get heated, take the high road. Step away, step aside. Be the bigger person. It takes two to make a quarter. So learn these things and put them into practice. And life is going to surely turn out better. Any questions? Any comments? Hmm. Hmm. I don't see anyone yet. Okay. <clears throat> but, uh. Yeah, go ahead. I, I like the idea, uh, well, I normally uh, wait for you to finish and then I go to my question, but, but um, suffice to say, I like the idea of the gift, and it's something that we must all take note of, that you know, all the days, the commercial days that we have now, and they keep adding to them, <laughs> Mother's Day, Father's Day, mm -hmm. all the days they are, 
they are just for commercial commercialism and sometimes it pressures people to um, to, to exchange gifts and uh, usually they they don't they don't give except they are expecting <laughs> and so it's a, it's an yeah. evil thing and so even in families we have that um, workplace and schools and church even in church now of uh, that big exchange of gifts so I just wanted to point that out <clears throat> that we have to be careful um, of getting trapped in those uh, those things it's a psychological and uh, it is it is such a pressure mm -hmm. you know and as you mentioned it it is um, it is really a evil thing to um, practice that or to be involved in that sometimes you don't have the funds and nowadays you have to talk about credit card people will trust things <laughs> and put themselves uh, into debt yes. uh, the card debt <sighs> humongous humongous debt and can pay um, <clears throat> the other thing is regarding the, the pro well I call it, well I am saying proposal because you know you see these little things now and then where a man would be proposing with a bunch of banana and that is that is something that you well, he's proposing with a bunch of bananas a bunch of, <laughs> yes <laughs> And as you Is say, that you, something in Africa? <laughs> yeah, you can give up banana. You can, and, and it is practical because sometimes, yeah, man. <coughs> you know, if you, I like banana, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, you have to appreciate what the giver can afford, and if it's yeah. given with love, I mean, it's quite funny because of yeah, culture and, of culture. Know, and all that, but. Um, Yes, it's good to uh, <clears throat> it's good to give, and it's good to be receptive of what your spouse can afford. Uh, yeah, and you know, sorry, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Uh, well, I'm going to something else with this scorn. I don't think I can say it in public. <laughs> The scorn. Scornful. Scornful dog. Like Somebody asked me to do something. I was like, but I was small. I was a boy those days. So I was scorning it. So my aunt, she shouted at me. Why? Take off my clothes. But, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, and even in your home, you know, you have to do disagreeable things. Who likes to clean the toilet and, and, and smog out of a, a, tub, a tub? But you have to do it to keep the house clean, you know. You wish you could put that on somebody else. But after a while, you find that you like doing it because of what it gives after. The bathroom looks clean and smells good and, and so on. You have your little babies. You have to clean them. If you leave them like that, what's going to happen? If you poop all around, right? So uh, yeah. we have to um, <clears throat> we have to do disagreeable duties from time to time. We yes. might get a husband or wife who's sick, and we have to take care of them. You know, we might not be able to do things for themselves. Sometimes they need them too long. The whole bed you have to make up again. You know, mm -hmm. things like that. Disagreeable tasks. And you know, Sister De Caris, they yes. use that term in another term also too, because I have known wives that use their, that term to husbands because they cook and the husband always complain, you know, mm -hmm. 
oh, what is your cook and you're not clean, you're not that. But then your husband went and buy Chinese food, Chinese food. So, you know, so in that term. And they didn't even have the frog leg was in it or the dog. Exactly, whatever. exactly. This is from your own kitchen and just because you're upset or because, you know, so scornful dog, he dirty food in. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. We have but to show due respect for each other. We talked about gifts, and uh, as we, as I'm listening to you talking about gifts, as Christian, I, sometimes I wish we we know better, you know, uh, in the beginning. But mm -hmm. uh, at my job, we were supposed to exchange gifts first, in, in one of my jobs. And I told them I didn't want to be a part of it so when I became, I'm a seminary, I mean, even Davidian. And, uh, but they don't listen. So one time there's this lady and uh, she brought me something that I still have today. And so I did not give her the gift at that time. I said, I'm not going to give her around the holiday time. And I wait until the holiday was over. And then I bought her something that is tangible, you know. Right. But they would bring you gifts and they would bring you five dollar gifts and then you even I see my daughter sometime buy gifts and you know, they would just give you something. Somebody gave me a gift one time, it was in the trunk of my car for a year. And then I took it and dropped it off at the Salvation Army because it's something that I don't want, I don't need. Right. It. Right. And right. you know. So it's very if you have to give somebody a gift, you know, I was just I was smiling because I was just in New York, and um, while I was there, I wanted to do something for my niece, you know, because she's kind of struggling and she's not well. And so one morning I went to the backyard and she had a neighbor that is so nosy, and you can't even bend down in the backyard. And I said, you know what? Just then the spirit said to me, she need a fence. <laughs> so I call a young man. And that I know that was a, make good neighbors. So <laughs> that was actually working there. And I said to him, listen, I needed to follow me to go to Lowe's. So we went to Lowe's and we bought a fence and came back and put up the fence and shut out her eyes. My my <laughs> daughter, my niece was at work. She didn't even know. And she came home. She was so happy. She said, the Auntie you Noma know, can't go in my backyard now because she was afraid to go in the backyard because this, this, this lady, she was just so nosy and and the backyard wasn't very clean either because mm -hmm. it was my niece alone and people come and tend and drop things there. Mm -hmm. So I had to clean up the backyard, clean up the whole place. And the lady look and say, oh, it's time. It's time somebody do that. Yes. Look at her. But then, you know, so if you're going to give gifts to somebody, give gifts mm -hmm. that is Meaningful. worthwhile. You know, my kids always say, how come you don't tell daddy to buy your flowers? I said, I don't need flowers. Mm -hmm. I love flowers, but flowers fade. Uh, mm -hmm. When you buy flowers, three days' time, they start to get fade. And I've seen so many husbands that buy a whole lot of flowers to their wives. And then the last flower, one lady, the last flowers that her husband gave her was Valentine's Day. And the following day, he told her, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. And came, yes, we walked in the morning and I said to her, I said to her, uh, I think you should go home now because it's Valentine's Day, your husband home waiting for you. So she said, uh, she said, oh, he doesn't, he's stupid, he doesn't not win. you know, let him wait. And then she went home and she called me and she said, did you tell kids to buy me flowers? I said, why would I do that? I don't even have your husband's number. She said, oh, he bought me a beautiful bouquet of flowers. I said, oh, that is so nice. She, so anyways, I said, I don't, and I said to her, I said, ah, I don't care about flowers. I said, flowers, I love flowers, but I don't want my husband to spend a penny in buying me flowers because the flowers come and in, no matter what water I give it in three days fade. And so the relationship fade. So I don't want, I don't care for flowers. She said, oh, you're so strange. I said, yes, I am. <laughs> However, mm -hmm. two days later, we drive to work a carpool at night, and she said to me, she had been very strange. And I said, what's wrong? She said, nothing, 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 nothing. And one night, we almost have an accident. And I said to my husband the next morning, I said, honey, let's pray that I use my own car, but I don't mm -hmm. want her. So I need to drive myself where I can pray and 